Hey there, I'm Silicon Thaumaturgy, and welcome to Stable Diffusion Basics. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make bigger images in Stable Diffusion, which is an intentionally vague premise. As the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I've tried a lot of them. No cats were harmed with making this video. Which is to say, there are many different methods, and more than one may work well for a particular circumstance. To help you decide, I'm going to cover the pros and cons, as well as any interesting pitfalls and trivia for these methods. This guide will only cover methods supported in the Stable Diffusion Web GUI, including outpainting, high-res fix, image-to-image, -image, just plain upscaling, and tile-based upscaling with Ultimate SD Upscale and ControlNet Tile. If you're interested in any of these particular and don't really care about the rest, feel free to skip around using the chapter markers in the video description. One method you might not have thought of is actually the base resolution for your image generations. If you go too far beyond the model's base resolution, you get twinning and all sorts of weird things showing up. In Stable Diffusion 1.5, the base resolution is 512 by 512. You can usually stretch this out to 768 in a single dimension, like 512 by 768, without too many issues. On the other hand, Stable Diffusion 2.1 has a base resolution of 768 by 768, and larger resolution models are planned in the future. Also, using tools that allow you to control the composition of the image, like the ubiquitous control net, increase the dimensions you can safely generate at. But some control net models are better than others at generating at high resolution. For example, depth is great at it, but open pose is only okay. There are still some pitfalls like needing higher CFG and higher weight causing more damage to the image, but at around 1.2 megapixels, these issues can be easily mitigated. While it's possible to go even higher than 1.2 megapixels, that puts you around the maximum resolution that a 24 gigabyte GPU can scale up 2x with high-res fix and image to image, so I personally don't. As a quick review, here are some recommendations for the maximum resolution you can use in various circumstances. Of the actual methods, first we're going to cover the odd man out of the bunch, the outpainting script. This option is accessible from the image to image tab and comes with two flavors. Poor Man's Outpainting and Outpainting Mark II. Both of these scripts have settings for the amount of pixels to outpaint, the direction of outpainting, and mask blur, and both recommend using Euler A at 8 to 100 steps with 0.8 denoising. Where they differ is, Poor Man's Outpainting has the same options for fill as Inpainting does, while Outpainting Mark II has falloff exponent and color variation. Color variation is going to determine how closely the colors match the rest of the image, while falloff exponent determines the level of detail. Finally, you can perform manual outpainting, which ironically uses inpainting instead of the outpainting scripts. First, manually expand your image in photo editing software and crudely draw what you envision in the new area. To save some time, you can give the new area just the tiniest bit of transparency in your photo editing software, and inpainting will automatically mask the new area when you upload it. When doing manual outpainting, you don't need as many steps and denoising as with the scripts. So. Pros and cons of outpainting. Outpainting is the only way for you to incrementally expand your image, but, in my opinion, that's its only pro. Outpainting is very labor intensive for both you and your GPU. The script recommends using 8 to 100 steps, which is a lot of GPU time for each attempt. On top of that, like in painting, you get the best results by telling your prompt what you want to see in the specific section and outpainting one side at a time. Your other option is to do manual outpainting, which saves GPU time, but is more work for you. Overall, I would try to incorporate this early into your workflow if you really need it. For these reasons, I try to design my workflow so I don't need to outpaint. A couple months ago, this would have been very difficult, but ControlNet and other composition control tools have made it much easier to get the composition you want right out of the gate. Up next are the secret twins, high res fix and image to image. High res fix is used by checking the high res fix box in the text to image screen. Once you check the box, the high res fix options will be displayed. I don't recommend using latent upscalers, so select another one. Denoising at 0.7 will cause substantial changes, so lowering to around 0.3 is a good compromise between preserving details and adding new ones. Finally, adjust the upscaling ratio to the desired level. For image to image upscaling, Either move the image to the Image to Image tab with the button, or drag and drop the desired image to the box. Select the desired resolution manually, or switch to the Ratio tab and use the slider. Once again, 0.75 denoising is probably too high for most cases, so lower that down to 0.3 or whatever you like. 
So you might have used image to image with the exact same settings as Hyros Fix and been confused when you got different results. This is because by default, image to image only performs steps equal to the slider steps times denoising when added up. In the settings, you can select an option that makes image to image use the full number of steps specified, like Hyros Fix. Or you can use maths and divide the desired numbers of steps by the denoising to get the steps for the slider. On to pros and cons. Since image to image and Hyros Fix have the same functionality, the difference between them are in usability and convenience. Hyros Fix is very convenient to use, but inflexible because you can't do anything, whether in pain, out pain, or manual editing before using it. Hyros Fix also has the ability to use latent upscalers when image to image does not, but since I don't recommend using them, it's kind of a moot point. Image to image is more flexible. In a recent update, image to image got the ratio slider, which is truly a godsend in terms of convenience because you don't have to do math to figure out what resolution to set. Before that, using image to image upscaling was a huge pain. What is still a pain for image to image is selecting the upscaler. To do this, you must go to the settings tab, select the upscaler you want, then click apply. Compared to other upscaling methods, Hyros Fix and image to image give you the flexibility to control the amount of change you want by denoising and fixing artifacts and awkward details from the basic upscaler. This allows you to improve things that can come out subpar during initial generation, like faces, and it also adds smaller details to the image that plain upscalers can't do by themselves. In terms of drawbacks, Hyros Fix and image to image upscaling are VRAM dependent, so your maximum resolution is severely limited. For 24 GB cards, the maximum resolution is around 4.8 megapixels, which you can see a couple of examples of here. As another drawback, as you approach the VRAM limit, Simply Fusion becomes less efficient. Instead of taking four times as long at double the resolution, in proportion to the number of pixels, it takes almost 20 times as long. Also, if you've done extensive in-pain, out-pain, or manual editing that makes the image less like your prompt, using image to image can damage those details, especially if denoising isn't super low. The next methods we are going to talk about are tile-based upscaling, which are SD upscale and ultimate SD upscale. Let's get the built-in regular SD upscale out of the way first. It has been demoted to trash tier. Why? Well, because the finished ControlNet tile model was released, which vastly improves the quality of tile-based upscaling. And unfortunately, it does not work with the regular SD upscale and only works with the ultimate SD upscale extension. Let's quickly go over how to use this amazing new tool. As a reminder, you need the ultimate SD upscale extension installed and the ControlNet tile model in your ControlNet folder. First, go to the Image to Image tab, then drag and drop the desired image into the interface. Next, select Ultimate SD Upscale in the Script dropdown, and select Scale from Image Size in the Target Size dropdown, then select your upscaler. Then open up a control net. You can either drag the image to control net or leave it empty. Both work fine. Click Enable, then select the Tile Resample Preprocessor and the control net tile model. Once again, 0.75 denoising is probably too high, so lower it to around 0.3 as a starting point. I usually also increase steps to get a bit better result. Then click Run to see your image upscaled. If you want your image to closely match the original, another option to select in ControlNet is that ControlNet is more important radio button instead of balanced. Pros and cons for Ultimate SD Upscale While Ultimate SD Upscale still uses VRAM, the usage is limited to the tile size instead of the overall image, which allows you to reach sizes far beyond high-res fix and image-to-image -image upscaling. Since Stable Diffusion is less efficient at high resolutions, this also usually makes it faster than high-res fix and image-to-image -image at the same resolution. Previously, the biggest issue with tile-based upscaling was that a single prompt was applied to each tile individually, which led to poor results often referred to as hallucinations for tiles not matching the prompt. While Control that Tile reduces this issue a lot, it does not completely solve it, and you can still get weird stuff showing up if you aren't careful. Another downside to using Ultimate SD Upscale is that, by virtue of being tile-based, there will be seams between the tiles. They may not be very noticeable, but they will be there, and each time you upscale, they will multiply. Overall, while ControlNet Tile is a massive leap forward in comparison to previous tile-based upscaling in terms of quality and control, I still think that Hyros Fix and Image-to-Image -image Upscaling give better results when the image comes from a single prompt. That said, it was only released a little bit over a week ago at this point, so I'm still playing around trying to find the best settings. So my opinion may change. The last method for making bigger images is just upscaling it, 
with 4x ultra sharp or whatever your preferred upscaler is. In the web GUI, this can be done in the extras tab. Select upscale and ratio and the upscaler, then go to town. This can be done with individual images, batches of images, or all the images in a particular folder. There are also tools outside the web GUI like Topaz Gigapixel and Adobe that work in much the same way. What these all have in common is that while they're technically AI, they're not guided by a prompt. The benefit of this is that upscaling is very fast and not dependent upon your VRAM. Hi-res Fix and image-to-image -image upscaling can't go beyond around 4.8 megapixels on 24 gigabyte cards. Even SD upscale on GTX 4090 is going to take forever at very high resolutions due to the sheer number of tiles. The downside is that this is not guided by a prompt, so you don't have control over what details are added to the image and artifacts can appear. Now that we've covered all the techniques, let's look at the big picture. Here's the general order that I would recommend placing these techniques in during your workflow. This also directly correlates to the maximum resolution for these methods, which increases as you go down the line. The factors driving this are VRAM usage and overall effort required. High-res fix and image damage require the most VRAM. Ultimate SD upscaler requires some, and basic upscaling isn't bottlenecked by VRAM at any reasonable resolution. Performing outpainting early on reduces the GPU time for it, which is ideal since it is already labor intensive due to needing prompting or manual editing. But what do you get in return for the increased hardware requirements and longer processing time? Well, in return you get more control with increasing ability to add and refine details during the upscaling, which can increase the quality of the output. Overall, I would recommend going as far as your VRAM can handle with high-res fix and image to image upscaling, then use Ultimate SD Upscale. However, if your image was edited to have significant elements not reflected in the prompt, then you might want to skip directly to Ultimate SD Upscale to get the best quality results. Now that we've talked ad nauseum about how to upscale to infinity and beyond, let's talk about how far we should upscale. Deciding on the resolution of images to display on computers is pretty straightforward. Display resolutions are usually standardized and include 1080p, 1440p, 4K, and 8K. However, 8K is currently the bleeding edge and represents less than 3% of TVs and monitors sold, and even less of those in the actual use. However, a trick some people use for making sharper images is to upscale past your final target, then downscale. I tested this out by doing 4x simple upscaling on some images. There does seem to be some very minor improvements, but I wasn't super impressed overall. So for digital media, going past 4,000 pixels is going to have diminishing returns, with 16,000 pixels being the absolute bleeding edge, there is very little benefit to go above. But the question gets more complicated if you plan to print your image. The ideal resolution for printed images depends on the viewing range. For images viewed from afar, 180 pixels per inch will suffice. But for images viewed up close, 300 pixels per inch is recommended. This table shows some common dimensions for prints and the resolutions for those at the two quality levels. To get a high quality print of a 4x6 photo, you already need about as many pixels as a 1080p image, or 1.2 megapixels. From there, Things escalate rapidly with a high quality print on office paper requiring 4K resolution, an 18x24 print slightly exceeding 8K, and finally, even an OK quality 24x36 print requiring nearly 8K resolution. So, long story short, if you plan to print stuff, you'll need to make your images very, very large to get the best quality. Speaking of quality, let's talk about how to upscale your picture. For example, is it better to upscale to three times the size in one go, or to upscale in many smaller stages? Here are a couple examples. The original image is in the center, and the images on the side are either upscaled in one stage, or in multiple stages to the same resolution. Both use the same seed and the same denoising for all upscalings. As you can see, the image that got upscaled in multiple stages is more detailed, but also more changed than the one upscaled in a single step. When you are making a very large image, usually you want more detail than you see at the base resolution. However, upscaling many times affects the color and brightness of the image. Interestingly, different upscalers have different color biases, but I won't get into that in this video. While color changes from the upscaling is noticeable if you look closely after even just one, I'd say you can probably get away with five upscales before it becomes too bad, though this will likely depend on the particular upscaler you use. This applies to high-res fix, image-to-image, -image, and simple upscaling, but will be closer when using image-to-image -image and high-res fix upscaling. For ultimate SD upscaler, things are a bit different. 
After upscaling in five stages, even when control that is more important is selected, things are a complete mess. Three is probably too far, but two seems safe. Overall, Ultimate SD Upscaler can't handle as many upscaling stages while maintaining quality. Two for safety, and three if you're feeling saucy. So, the practical limit for the number of upscaling stages is five, with only two of those being Ultimate SD Upscale. So now that we have a target resolution and no limitations for stages, what is the best overall combination of methods and stages for upscaling? With all the possibilities, I don't think there's a definitive answer, but here are some hypothetical workflows with a thought process behind them. As before, I think Hi-Res VIX and image to image offer the best quality, so I prioritize having more steps of that, even if I have to use a lower ratio on them and scale up more in later steps. After image to image upscaling, I limit myself to two stages of ultimate SD upscale to prevent too many hallucinations or loss of quality from showing up in the final image. Beyond that, I resort to simple upscaling. And that wraps up this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you learned a better way for making bigger images in Stable Diffusion. If you have any burning questions about Stable Diffusion you want answered, leave a comment, and who knows, I might make a video about it. Till next time!